Canon EOS R menu settings walkthrough for photography. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you're all having amazing creative days. Today's video is all about the EOS R and my photography settings with this camera. I got a question from a subscriber asking me, hey, what are the settings? So I figured, hey, let's make a video about it. So this video is gonna be kind of like haphazard. I'm not scripting it. I'm just gonna go through my settings and talk about each setting. If it's important, if it's not important, I'm just gonna skip over it. So I'm gonna try and keep this short and sweet and to the point. If there's something that I skipped over that you wanna know more about, leave, it, uh, leave your questions down in the comments. And uh, yeah, with that being said, let's get started because who wants to watch a video that's four hours long? All right. All right, so let's get started. Here we are in the red tab and we are looking at image quality. Now, I always shoot raw, raw is the way to go. If you're delivering photos to clients, you want the best possible quality, raw gives you that. Uh, in terms of the JPEGs, I keep it on the small JPEG, unless of course I'm setting up a web gallery for a client, then I'll put it on medium and then I can send those medium JPEGs out for review as a proof gallery. Or if, I, if it's a really important client and I want them to have really good quality, like proof gallery, I will just convert the RAWs to JPEG and send them those. So depending on what you wanna do, that's an option. Dual pixel RAW is off. Cropping aspect ratio, I keep it on full so that uses the full sensor. If I'm shooting thumbnails for YouTube, I'll have it on 16 by nine. So that way everything that's in the shot is in the thumbnail because for those of us who make YouTube thumbnails, sometimes you know you take a perfect shot and you try and fit it in that 16 by nine aspect ratio and the thing you wanna show is cut off. Anyway, YouTuber problems. So yeah, I keep that on full most of the time. Image review is off. Of course, these EVFs, you can see the exposure in the camera when you're taking the shot. So there's no real need to have an image pop up. Older cameras, obviously you need the LCD so you can check exposure, but with these ones, it's off. The only time it's on for me is if I'm shooting in really tricky lighting and I want to just keep checking all the time to make sure I'm getting it because uh, sometimes you just need to check all the time. Uh, shutter release without card is on. Um, okay, so that's that one. Next one, lens aberration correction. I usually keep this on. Obviously, it, the camera makes adjustments or the, uh, yeah, the camera makes adjustments in camera or puts information in the exit data. So when you load it into Lightroom or Capture One, the program knows what lens you're using and it'll adjust for vignette or warping and that kind of thing. So that's always good to have on there. We're gonna close that external speed light control. Obviously, if you have a flash on top of your camera, you can uh, adjust settings here, which is pretty cool. Next, what do we have? Exposure compensation. I think we all know what that is. ISO speed settings. So you can set your, uh, your ISO speed here, your range, all that stuff. So if you wanna go at the lowest ISO of 1600, there you go. <laughs> and you can set your, your high and low and all that stuff. So that's pretty cool. It's super handy there especially if you have it on auto ISO, you can set your range so the camera doesn't go beyond a certain range because you don't want it going to like maximum ISO and your pictures are all grainy. All right, minimum shutter speed, you can set this here too. And we're gonna get out of here and auto lighting optimizer I have off and I have it off because of I, I have highlight tone priority on. You can't have them both on at the same time. And uh, I keep it on D plus, obviously if you're D plus enhanced, then you can disable it and all that stuff. So well, highlight tone priority. The reason I like to have it on is because Canon cameras, the dynamic range for the Canon cameras are all in the shadows. Like if you shoot with Sony, for example, and you expose for something, you have dynamic range on the light side and the dark side. With Canon, it's all on the dark side and there's a lot of it too. So. When you, when you wanna get a correct exposure, let's say you're shooting a bride and a groom at a wedding and there's a bright sky, what you wanna do is you wanna adjust your, uh, your uh, exposure for the, the bride's dress in the sky and try and make sure that those are properly exposed. And then you can bring back the shadows in post. And highlight tone priority, what it does is it preserves the detail in highlights. So it kind of adds a little bit of dynamic range in the highlights, which is good. And the downside is it can add a touch of noise in dark areas. For me, I. I haven't really noticed that to be a problem. So if you're shooting in tricky lighting, high contrast, I say you keep highlight tone priority on and expose for the highlights. And then highlight tone priority will preserve the details in the highlights. And then you take the shadows and you boost them up in post. And there you go. You get a nice image with a lot of dynamic range. Uh, metering timer, whatever, exposure simulation, enabled or disabled. So right now, I've been shooting with this camera in natural light or shooting video, so I have it enabled. Now, if you wanna shoot in studio, 
you have to disable this. So remember that because what happens is, let's say you're setting up a studio shot and you have strobes firing. When the strobes fire, your exposure completely changes, right? You're shooting at like F9 or something like that. But if you have your camera set to F2.8 or, or I don't know, whatever the exposure settings are on your camera, when the strobes fire, it's gonna be wrong, right? So you just have to disable it and the camera will just give you a general view of what it thinks the correct exposure is, but it will not use the viewfinder information to expose your image. So it just it's one of those things that a lot of newbies run into when they use these cameras. It's just take off, turn off exposure simulation if you're using studio strobes, and then you have to manually dial in on your all your settings to work with the uh, the studio lights. All right, so number four, white balance. I just leave Canon cameras on auto white balance. They're pretty awesome. If I'm shooting with multiple cameras and I want everything to be the same, I will put it on like Calvin. I will select the Calvin mode manually. But in general, all these other white balance modes, they don't even need to exist. Canon cameras are so good at knowing what the proper white balance is. I've never had any issues. It's not like a Sony where everything turns out orange and you're like, what is going on here? <laughs> everything is sunset mode. And yeah, I had, I had a lot of trouble with Sony. I used to own a Sony a7 III when it first came out and the colors were just so weird to me. I had to sell it. And with Canon, you just leave it on auto white balance 99.99% of the time and it gets it right all the time. There's actually a, a video about it here, fellow Toronto YouTuber, Camera Conspiracies. If you haven't checked out his channel before, he's he's funny. He's got a weird, weird sense of humor, but he's funny. And uh, he reviews cameras and stuff from uh, the perspective of, he calls it a, a vlogger hobo or a YouTube hobo. <laughs> but anyway, check him out. He just did this video on... Um, white balances with different systems. So it's pretty cool if you wanna check that out. So let's get out of here and next, custom white balance. And Canon has a weird way of setting custom white balance. You have to shoot a photo of something white. Even if you're in video mode, you have to shoot a photo of something white and you have to go and register that photo and that's the, the custom white balance. Honestly, like I said, the auto white balance on Canon cameras is so good. I've never actually used the custom white balance on this. I've used it on my older cameras, but I don't think I've ever used it on the R. Uh, white balance shift so here if like if you want to get creative this can be fun like let's say you're using like blue leds and then you want to shift everything towards pink or something so you can like shift it towards pink and you see this is what i'm looking at here this is where my eyes keep drifting i've got the the recorder here um yeah so you can um play around with this i usually just keep it on neutral and then do my uh, adjusting in post but if you want that's something you can do let's get out of here Color space, sRGB is where I have it. Picture style, I have it on my own user defined one. Now, thing to remember that with this is this these settings only affect your JPEGs, not your RAWs. Your RAWs are raw, and when you pop them into Lightroom or Capture One or whatever, you'll be able to edit them. But I do have this set to user defined one. So these are my settings here. My strength, sharpness strength is set to seven. Fineness is set to five, threshold is set to five, contrast is minus one, saturation is zero, color tone zero, and that is it. Menu back. So when I shoot those JPEGs to set up proof galleries for clients, these settings here affect the JPEGs. That's why I have the sharpening up. So it just looks a little sharper and cleaner, send it off to the client because these, these cameras tend to shoot more neutral so everything isn't super sharp, but you can sharpen it in post. So I just sharpen up those JPEGs. So those are uh, my picture styles. And what do we have next? Long exposure simulation. You can disable, I mean, what, long exposure noise reduction. You can disable it and I just leave it to auto. So if I'm shooting with a higher ISO, longer exposure, whatever, the camera can determine how much processing it wants to put into the noise. So I just leave it on auto. I don't generally shoot a lot of dark stuff, so it makes no difference to me. Um, High ISO noise reduction, I have it set to two out of three. I haven't really played around with this. I think I set this when I first picked up the camera and I haven't touched it since. Um, dust delete data, nothing really here, but I guess you could put that in if you want. The, the touch shutter, this thing annoyed the heck out of me and it might be on by default, it might be off by default, I'm not sure, but it's basically when you touch the back LCD or you tap it, the camera will fire a shot. <laughs> so I'd be trying to change my settings and the camera would take a picture and I'd be like, no. <laughs> so yeah, that's disabled. Uh, Multi-exposure, if you wanna do multiple exposures, you can here. This is where you set it all up. 
uh, HDR mode. Again, this is where you set it up. And here we go. Anti-flicker shoot is disabled, but if you are shooting, let's say you're shooting like a basketball game or something and you're in a gymnasium and there's fluorescent lights, they're flickering. You want to turn on this to try and get rid of those flickers because sometimes, I don't know if you've noticed this, but like you'll see a light, dark, light, dark, light, dark on somebody because of the flicker of the lights. So that's just something to keep in mind if you shoot in those situations and then silent LV shooting. Silent shooting is, is usually a, a good way to go if you're shooting events, but uh, not absolutely necessary. Okay, now we're moving to autofocus. AF operation is one shot. Obviously, you understand one shot is you take the shot, you hold the button, you can recompose and shoot. And as long as you have either the rear button focus or the shutter button pushed down, the camera will focus. But if you let go of either one of those, the camera stops focusing. Whereas with servo mode, the camera is constantly focusing. Whatever the focus point is on, the camera is focusing. So depending on what you're shooting, servo is better for shooting people, live events, that kind of thing. One shot, you know, YouTube thumbnails, product shots, that kind of thing. So depending on what you want to do, you can set that up. AF methods. So I've turned off all but three of my autofocus methods. I find I don't really need them. So I have my face tracking, object tracking. I have this like spot tracking. So if I want to move the little square around, I can move the square around my shot to just focus on one thing. And then I have this zone AF. So if I want to focus in the middle or to the left or to the right, I have that on. Everything else is disabled. Of course, this is where you turn on eye detection. This camera, the EOS R doesn't have animal eye detect or car eye detect or anything like that. It's just eye detect. So enable and continuous autofocus. So this is an interesting thing here too. Continuous AF is sort of when you're not shooting and you're just like pointing the camera at different things, if continuous AF is enabled, the camera will continue to focus on whatever it is as if it were in servo mode, even if you're not touching the, the shutter release. And that's just so that when you look through your EVF or LCD on the back, the camera or whatever you're looking at will be in focus as opposed to you getting a blurry image and having to tap the button to focus, which is what happens if you have it set to disabled. So. There's advantages or disadvantages to this. I keep it enabled, but sometimes when I'm filming certain things, I want a certain effect, so I disable it. So uh, right now it is enabled. Uh, touch and drag AF settings, obviously enabled. So that allows you to touch and drag your focus point on the back of the screen. I have a video about it there if you want to check it out. And it's super handy. I find like a lot of people complained about the EOS are not having a joystick. But once you get used to using your thumb on the LCD screen on the back, it's so much faster than a joystick. Now on my R5, I use the LCD screen instead of the joystick. And uh, you want to definitely put that to relative. So relative means that, well, actually, in that video I just showed you, I go more into depth onto that. So if you want to watch that, check out the video. There's no sense in me repeating myself. And then, of course, here you can just set up what part of the screen you want to be draggable touch and drag sensitive so let's get out of here and what do we have next focus guide on or off if you want a focus guide that's more for manually focusing things but uh, yeah if you want it you can turn it on uh, tracking sensitivity here we go i have mine to responsive so it's plus two back acceleration deceleration tracking i have mine set to plus two and then autofocus PT, AFPT auto switching. Okay, I think that's how sensitive it is from switching from subject to subject. If another subject jumps in front of it, I have mine set to zero. All right, next we have lens electronic manual focus is off. AF assist, assist can't talk today. AF assist beam firing. Now, I have it on right now, but sometimes, like if you're shooting, let's say weddings or events and it's dark, you need the assist beam to fire. Other times it can be distracting because it emits a little bit of a light. So if you're trying to shoot someone and be a little more incognito at like a wedding and then the light just fires on them, they'll see this orange light and they'll be like, what? <laughs> so it's just something to keep in mind. I usually keep it on because it helps me focus. But like I said, if you want to be a little more like, I don't know, if you're trying to capture the moment, you don't want to interrupt people in the moment and then they look at you instead of enjoying the moment and the shot changes, you know what I mean? So just something to think about. Uh, one shot AF release prior. I don't even know what this is to be honest with you. I have it set to focus. Uh, one shot AF release. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So what this means is 
when you're taking a picture, if the camera can't achieve focus, should it just release the shot and take it anyway? Or should wait, should wait to get focus first before releasing the shot? Obviously, what are you gonna do with a blurry shot? So I have it set to focus. And lens drive when AF impossible on. Limit autofocus methods. So this is the spot where I turn off the autofocus methods that I don't use. So you just click on which one you want, on, off, on, off. And that makes it nice and easy, okay. And the way I have this camera set up, I, I, I set up my, my swipe bar or multifunction touch bar in a very specific way. And that's why I have certain things turned off. So if I swipe to one side, I go to eye tracking. If I swipe to the other side, I have a zone focus. So it's easy for me if I'm vlogging, for example, or recording somebody just to switch between the two modes really fast. I have a video about it there if you want to check that out. It's also all these videos are going to be linked down in the description as well. Uh, orientation linked. I usually turn it off, but if you want, you can turn it on. So when you flip to portrait mode, landscape mode, portrait mode, the focus point will stay in relatively the same position or it'll move. Like if you have a top left, it'll move top left when you switch modes. I just, I have that off. Uh, initial servo AF point for face. I don't remember what this actually does, but that's the setting I have. I don't know. I've just had it on that top setting, I guess, since I, I bought the camera and <laughs> it works. So I've never really looked into it. And then here, the play settings, uh, we'll skip over that. And then um, what do we have here that's important? File numbering, rotate our format card, eco mode. Eco mode is off because I shoot a lot of video. So if, I, uh, if I'm shooting video and I you know, step away from the camera for a second, the camera just goes into sleep mode. So that's why I have it off. But if you're just shooting photos, I would say turn eco mode on. That way when you put the camera down by your side, it just goes to sleep and you save battery. So that's a good thing, power saving. Again, I would set it to one minute if you're not shooting video. If you are shooting video and you need to see that LCD screen, I set it to 30 minutes and your auto power off, you find her off, all that stuff. You can change all that here. Date, time, language, video. I can't, of course, with video, we're, I'm in North America, so I have it NTSF. And then if you're in Europe or wherever it uses PAL, you can change it to PAL. Uh, touch control, sensitive, standard. Beep, I disable the beep. I like the beep though. I, sometimes when I'm shooting models, they want to hear the beep. So they like tighten up their pose. And then sometimes I just keep the beep off because it just <laughs> after being a photographer for 18 years, <laughs> you're kind of tired of hearing that beep. Uh, battery info, sensor cleaning, HDMI resolution. Um, I think this is all pretty much straightforward stuff here. Display settings, auto. Uh, we have this display power, no. Uh, shooting display info. Okay, here we go. So the one thing that I will turn on on all my cameras is this grid display, the three by three. And this sort of breaks the, the screen into thirds. So you can use the rule of thirds to compose your shots. And believe it or not, it's a simple little thing. But if you put your subject matter on one of those like four intersecting lines, your photos look a lot more professional. It's an easy way to take your photo game up to the next level without like going too crazy into it. So if you're a beginner, that's uh, definitely a tip. Use your rule of thirds. Uh, histogram is set to brightness. All right, let's get out of here. Wireless communications, GPS, uh, multifunction lock, custom modes. Like obviously custom modes, you can, you can set custom modes and then save them to C1, C2, C3 and bring them up uh, when you need them. I don't the only time I really use that if I, is if, like if I'm shooting a wedding and I'm going from inside to outside to inside to outside, I'll have one custom setting for inside and one for outside just so I can switch things back and forth pretty easily. But for the most part, I'm just always in manual mode mode or that new AV mode, which I really like. Um, that's it. Exposure level increments set to one third. ISO speed setting increments one to one bracket auto cancel. Bracketing, I don't really do that. Number of brackets, safety shift. Mm, nothing really there. Shutter speed range. Okay, so this is this is one thing I hope Canon fixes in their firmware because these cameras have like a photo mode and a video mode. And like in video mode, you wanna be shooting, I like to shoot at 24 frames a second, so my shutter speed should be at 50, but when it comes to shooting photos, when you're shooting a wedding, you want to keep everything above 100. 
So lower shutter speed. Oh, yeah, I have 30 seconds here. I was shooting some long exposures the other day. So if like if I'm shooting a wedding, I'll have it set to 125. But if I want to shoot video, I can't get to 50 of the second. So I got to drop this down to 30th. So it's a bit of a pain. I wish Canon had um, a shutter speed range for photo mode and a sh different shutter speed range setting for video mode instead of having everything in the same place. Okay, now how do I navigate to the OK? There we go. Set aperture range, same thing. So if you want a minimum or maximum aperture range, you can kind of tighten it up. Let's say if you're shooting group shots all day, maybe you don't want to shoot at F1.2, right? <laughs> you want to be at F4, F8. So you can kind of change it here so you don't mess up by accident. Um, AE lock. There you go. That's what I have in my settings. Meter mode after focus. You can change the dial directions of your lenses. So if, you, if you're used to focusing in the opposite direction, I think Tamron's are all backwards uh, relative to Canon lenses, focus ring rotation, all that stuff. Uh, custom buttons. Here, I'll just scroll through these quickly. You can pause the video and uh, take a look. I don't do anything fancy with those. Custom dials. This is how I have my dials set up. And then here we have the multifunction touch bar. I think I put a video up earlier. This is how I set up my touch bar. If you want to know, uh, get into more detail about that. I kind of, um, I turn off the left tap and the right tap and I just use the swipe feature. So I limit its ability, but it makes it a lot easier to use. And of course that lock, I, you don't, you can, don't have to use that lock with that, that mode. Um, and that is pretty much it. Add cropping information off default erase options. Release shutter without lens, obviously that's on. By default, it's off. Now, the reason I have it on is because I like shooting with vintage lenses. So the camera and the lens communicate back and forth, electronics and vintage lenses obviously have no electronics. So when it's on the front of the camera, the camera thinks there's no lens and it won't fire the shutter. So if you wanna shoot with vintage glass, uh, watch that video over there uh, because of vintage lenses. Uh, and that is it. Now, this is a pretty cool thing. You have this like star menu and that's your own custom menu. So you can go in there and configure that to whatever you want. So right now, this is my settings for shooting in studio. These are my settings for shooting outdoor. So, you know, depending on what I'm doing, I can quickly access certain settings. I just wish Canon allowed you to put more than what you have access to here. One, two, three, four, five settings. <laughs> I wish you could put like 10. It'd be a lot better. Um, but anyway, those are my settings. And then when it comes to, uh, let's see, shooting, I like AV mode. AV mode's pretty good. So the reason I really like AV mode is it allows me to, you it's basically like manual mode. You have all your options, just like manual mode, but you can take, let's say your ISO and swing it all the way to like zero and zero would be auto mode. So now your ISO is auto, but you still have manual control over your shutter speed and, uh, and aperture. And then you can take your aperture all the way down to one end and it'll go to auto. So aperture will be auto, ISO will be auto, and your shutter speed, you can dial in manually however you want. Or let's say you want your aperture to stay at 1.2, and then you want control over your shutter speed and your ISO goes auto. So it kind of is, it's all the modes in one, and it's a little more robust. So AV mode is pretty cool. Ever since they, uh, they introduced it here with the R, or I don't know if they might've put it in another camera before, but the first time I saw it was with the R, and uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. All right, you made it to the end and now you know my settings for shooting photos with the uh, EOS R. And I know that wasn't super exciting of a video, but hopefully it was informative. Hopefully you learned something. If you have any questions about using the camera, leave them down below. If you want a one-on-one -on, -one on how to set this thing up for shooting video, video over there also linked in the description. And uh, yeah, that is it. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out, have a good one. And uh, yeah, that's it, see ya.